All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you um, to those of you who have come to the, the webinar live and welcome also to those of you who happen to be watching this uh, on the YouTube recording. So what we're going through this afternoon is running Financial Basics Foundation's free end of year financial literacy activity session. So just so you can see me, there's my happy smiling face. My name's Damien Nicholson. I'm the National Program Manager with FBF. I've turned my webcam off so that we can maximize the real estate on the screen for the presentation and the information that I'm going to show you today. Um, but just to be, you know, polite and friendly, that that's me. That's the, the voice on the other end. Um, my background is in education. Uh, I've spent just shy of 20 years in the Education Queensland space, uh, the public education space in Queensland, for those of you who are, who are not from the Sunshine State. And my background there was with business, IT, English, um, business being one of my main subject areas, and also some work as a head of department. Um, and my passion for financial literacy education as initially a user of Financial Basics Foundation resources is what brought me into the role. I now have overseeing the education programs uh, within the charity. And if you do happen to come in from the education space and have questions or queries or or want some further follow-up on anything education related, you'll have my contact details uh, by the end of this webinar and also in the recording. Um, so please do reach out to me directly. It will save you uh, having to go through the help desk if you need something urgently because your inquiry will come to me almost certainly. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback or comments throughout the session, if you can just use the chat window um, on my Windows PC, there's a little bar at the bottom of my Zoom screen that uh, that pops up with the chat bubble. Um, I'm not sure where it might be on various other devices, but if you could have a look for that and just send any messages in through there. And if you do happen to find that I may have missed something, um, we will revisit all of those messages at the end of the session. And I'm also open to being emailed if I if I do happen to, to not address your query fully or you want to follow, a follow up um, after the session or a phone call or whatever might suit you. So what we're going to be covering today is we're going to look at all of our free resources uh, in the context of how they can be used in the end of the school year, especially in that post-assessment period um, where often we know and I know firsthand um, Teachers are often looking for things to do, especially if their school has put in really strong directives about you know, learning every day and wanting to know the rigor of what students are doing. Um, I, I can tell you I use Financial Basics Foundation resources in those contexts for many years, and they were great for student engagement, uh, low prep time, um, and the kids got a lot out of it without it being a, you know, an onerous or difficult thing for me at the end of the year. In fact, I always enjoyed it, which is a great position to be in. Um, when you're accessing a free resource that other people have put together. Uh, so we're going to be looking at um, the Easy Money Game, which is one of our flagship products. It's a, a game that's mapped to the Australian curriculum, uh, gamified resource for financial literacy that uh, kids take a lot out of without even knowing that they're learning. Um, there's Operation Financial Literacy, which is a, a PDF, more black line master style resource. There's our web quests, which I'll, I'll show you as a breakdown for them. If you haven't used web quests before, it'll be easier for me to show you those than, than try and give a, a brief summary of them. Um, there's You guys are going to be the first group of teachers this year that have seen a sneak peek of a new resource that is about to launch in two weeks, a video resource called Money IQ. Uh, for those of you who are on YouTube, I am sorry, you'll only get a short a snippet of it in the re the recording, but for those of you who are here live, you'll actually get um, to see one of the the, the full three minute videos, um, which you'll be able to utilize for the end of the year as well. There'll be some frequently asked questions that I'll cover for you at the end of the session, and I'll also be making sure I get through your questions as well. Uh, the other thing I'll note also is, although this session has been set up for an hour, my aim is to give you the overview of what I intend on covering uh, between 30 minutes and 45 minutes, leaving time for questions and answers at the end of the session, and also with an aim to give you some time back if we do happen to wrap up earlier. Uh, the other side of that too is what I'm looking for is by the time you either finish watching this recording um, or sitting through the session live, that you have something that you can either start using during the session and, and investigating further and possibly even putting together for lessons tomorrow or later in the term, um, 
or at the very least something that you can see a use for in your immediate future that you can take away and use without having to do a lot of extra prep work. Uh, that's what I'm looking for because there is nothing worse in education PDs than I think that when you sit through a session, you've spent your time and you actually walk out of it not having anything to show for the time you've invested with um, or no resources or strategies or whatever you were there for. So I'm aiming to give you that and have you with those tools in your hands within the next 30 to 45 minutes. So just giving um, you a little bit of information front-ended uh, and I'll also flip very quickly to a, a web page that is specifically on our um, website for teachers and IT staff. Uh, so our website is there. If you haven't um, already checked out our resources or signed up for a free educator account, I'd encourage you to jump over and, and start that process because um, I'll be going through and approving any that come through as soon as this session ends. Uh, to let you know, we're a charity, which I already mentioned. We're a very, very independent not-for-profit. Um, we take that independence extremely seriously because we know in the education space that any slip-up we have in that regard would undo you know, two decades of goodwill and trust we've built up with educators. So we take the independence of our charity extremely seriously. Um, the charity itself was established in 2002. Myself, I came on board in 2017. Um, so I'm just, just ticking over six years with FBF after stepping out of the classroom. Um, in terms of privacy, we maintain all our own servers and databases in Australia. We don't share any of our information or data or databases with our sponsors or our partners. Um, we are fun funded through sponsorship, but we have really stringent agreements in place where essentially our sponsors come in uh, generally through their social justice wings. Um, and they know when they're coming on board that they're looking to support the work we do as opposed to utilize it as a data mining activity. And any sponsors that do attempt to come in with, you know, data mining in mind, do not work with us. That's the, the, the simple line that we have in the sand. Uh, all our resources are free of charge for Australian educators and everything we do is mapped to the Australian curriculum. And I do mention that because I do know that there are some states and territories that have... Um, additions, extras, or their own versions of the Australian curriculum. Uh, that is much too difficult and time consuming for us to map our resources to all of the different flavors of the different states and territories. So we always go back to the Australian curriculum and I would encourage you if you are looking for something in our resources, um, if your state or territory uses a different curriculum code to the Australian curriculum, please just search for the keyword and you'll find what you're looking for as opposed to looking for the, the curriculum code when you're searching for a resource. Uh, on our website, just very quickly to point it out to you, under the Educator Hub, there is this Education Department Safe List info that if you are coming in here and you're thinking after you've seen all of this information that you might need to pass this along to whomever in your organization with um, you know, a request for access or uh, something else of that nature that requires you to provide some of this privacy info. Every time I've been asked uh, by a state or territory, public or private organization, um, or even some community groups, anytime I've been asked a, a privacy or data uh, issue um, question, I've collated them onto this website and onto the PDF document that you can download from this site. If you're in WA, we've actually been through the WA approval process. So you can actually grab our stuff straight for your state and all the appropriate codes and, and numbers to, to access all of our resources. So that's there for you as well. For your reference, for your investigation, if you need it. Uh, this is the first time I'll put up my and our contact details. So uh, again, this will be available to you. But if you're someone like me who likes to grab photos of these sorts of things or screenshots during sessions, please do feel free to grab my, my uh, direct contact details as well as the social media um, platforms that we utilize. And I'd, I'd highly encourage you to check those out and support them if you're able to, especially YouTube, which I will show you why by the end of this session with some really exciting resources we've got coming into our YouTube uh, channel in the next couple of weeks. Now, at this point, I am actually going to jump over and do the rest of this session, not in PowerPoint. I'm actually going to utilize our website the same way as you would utilize it uh, when you're coming back to this or watching along with it uh, to access and, and investigate the resources that you want to dig into more. So the first resource I'm going to cover just uh, for convenience's sake is the easy money game. 
um, mentioned at the, the start of the session. And if you are someone who would like to play along, you can actually scan that QR code or type that link into your browser and you can create a student account. It doesn't require any kind of approvals to play as a student. Just please note that if you do want to, um, to play along with this, please choose a year of birth that puts you in high school. Uh, so unfortunately for myself, if I put my year of birth in, the easy money game tells me that that's not a valid um, year. Uh, and it only asks for the year, not your full date of birth. So if you use something like 2010, you will successfully register a student account without any issues at all. And you'll be able to play along um, and kind of keep my voice in one ear. And you can investigate the game and explore it for yourself uh, as we go through, if you would like to. I think I've allowed enough time there for people to get that link uh, or scan that QR code. So where you find the easy money game is on our website in the educator hub. Uh, you do need to be logged in to resource, uh, to resource it. My apologies. You do need to be logged in to access that resource. So if you don't already have an account up the top, there is a sign up section. Click on that. Choose your registration type and follow the bouncing ball to create your registration. It's a really straightforward process. Um, it takes generally around 90 seconds to two minutes, a minute and a half to two minutes to complete. Uh, w just to let you know, as an educator, we do have to verify educators' um, email addresses as in terms of making sure that it is a, a valid education authority because we do get a lot of young people try and sign up. They have their own account and resources they can access. Uh, but for educators, uh, students like to try and create teacher accounts to play the easy money game once they've started playing it. That is how popular it is. So we do have to vet and approve uh, educator accounts manually. So if you don't already have one, um, this is to get access to the educator resources. Please make that account and I will approve it as soon as we are done here. That link I gave you to play easy money, the teacher and student databases are completely separate. So you can, in air quotes, create a student account to play easy money. And I highly encourage you to do that because it's an exceptionally fun PD, but it also will spark off ideas for you um, on what you can do with your students when you're playing the game. But more on that in a moment. So once you're logged in, under your Educator Hub, you'll actually get a few more extra links that are hidden for anyone but teachers. And one of those is the Easy Money Portal. And that portal is where you can register your classes. And it's also where, sorry, I was scrolling down into all of mine. Um, you can add a new Easy Money class, you can register those classes, and you can also see the ones that you do have registered. Just a very quick point, um, so that you're aware of it, we have actually hit a, a saturation point with um, the popularity of Easy Money and access through our website that is actually causing uh, like sometimes up to like a three or five minute delay from when classes are registered uh, to when they show up during really busy and high demand periods. We are aware of that issue. We are not happy with that delay, but we're currently working with our website and game developers to shorten that time. So please do bear with us as we are working through that. We, it's our priority currently and we are we're currently scoping out how we go about resolving that over the Christmas break um, when the game has some downtime for maintenance so please just be aware that once you register that class and hit add class it can take a few minutes for it to appear please just be patient with it they will come up you will get your game links you will get all of your you know all of the different things that come with the game now just very quickly while I'm here to point it out to you there's a reset password button here that is designed for now these are these are all teachers who i have permission to be using uh, with what we're doing here so please don't be concerned about any um potential with these email addresses and with the recording because it is going up on youtube i will actually be be blanking those out so if you're on youtube you'll be looking at a fuzzy screen at the moment but if you have um students in your class and they are forgetful with their password you can reset their password for them. The reason we put this in place is we found that a lot of uh, filtering systems block out our automated student password reset facility um, because the student filters tend to be a lot more stringent than the teacher ones. Uh, so students should be able to reset their own password, but if they don't receive those emails, you can go along, hit the reset password button and put a new password in for that student, tell them what it is and you'll be up and running during the lesson. So when you've got, aside from the reset password, when you've registered your class, 
the game link is the button that is will take you to the URL that you give to students. So that's how they play the game. There's then a, a button for the teacher dashboard. There's a report that you can download for your class to look at their gameplay and keep it in an Excel spreadsheet if you want to. Um, I'll get to more on that button as we explore the game a little bit. But the in brief, actually I'll, I'll do it now I'm here at this section. In brief, it's there as a record keeping facility for teachers who want it. And it also means that if you're a teacher or a head of department or a lead teacher who's overseeing multiple classes playing easy money, you can actually merge those spreadsheets together to create little internal leaderboards if you would like to. Um, it is actually an initiative I brought in with me when I came to Financial Basics Foundation because that was something that I did manually in my, my school and I wanted to be able to create something that, and that made that easier for other teachers. So back to the game link. When you hit that game link, you'll be brought to this screen here. So this is where what your students will see. At the moment, I am now going to be playing using my Gmail account that I have registered as a student. And if they've come here before, they type in their email address and password, they hit login. If they haven't, and like many of you are at the moment, hit create account, put the details in and create the account. That's it. It's automatically approved. It takes you back to the login screen. You log in and you start playing. Um, what I was mentioning before is this is the forgot password thing for students that often ends up in the email not being received so that's where you can use your teacher reset password password facility if they if they uh, get forgetful and i'm sure some of you are already thinking of the students in your class who will forget their password probably within the first five minutes um, and you will end up resetting their password once or more uh, so hopefully that button helps you speed up that process so once you've got logged in um, every time you create a new class link and register a, a link for easy money, which you can do as many as you want. Uh, your students can play up to five games on that link. If you want students to play more games than that, or what I strongly recommend is, you know, you'll get obsessed students who want to play it at home. You can create a homework link at the very least and let them play some games at home and keep your class link uh, for class so you don't end up with students burning through, you know, <laughs> 15 hours of playtime or more um, in, in three days between lessons. They have this option to play their games. They can have five games going simultaneously. They can play them one at a time. They can come back to them uh, as they see fit. They can save and exit and reload. All they need is that link that you give them, that game link. And after that, they can play anywhere at any time. So for here, I've played one game through to week five just to make it easier to show you um, all the elements that are available to you and to them in the game um, but you can also start a new game which is what those of you who might be playing along with me you're probably currently in there and maybe even have one or two weeks under your belt so if i go to the, the game one i've got all this preloaded to speed things up um, and make sure i can maximize the you know your bang for buck and the the time you're spending here with me um, so when the game loads in, it's a, it's a really simple, straightforward, familiar interface. It's app-centric, um, and what the Easy Money game is, is a simulation that basically puts your student, regardless of how old they actually are, in the shoes of an 18-year-old who has finished school, moved out of home, and is navigating all of the, the world of personal finance um, for themselves that your high school students will hopefully get a handle on with the game before they have to do it themselves. Uh, now, I do understand that, especially with cost of living pressures and and the, the reality of things in 2023, that many of the 18-year-olds may not be moving out um, straight away on their own. I get that. Um, but please do keep in mind, the whole principle of this is put the students in the situation of living on their own, being an adult, being responsible for all of their own decisions, all of their own finances, and navigating all of the different things that come with them, including in, with that situation, including scams um, and managing bank accounts and, and juggling needs versus wants. Uh, all of that is contained in the game in this simple app centric design that the, the, the young people in your class, they will pick up on it you know, in a heartbeat. They, they will be clicking and tapping and on whatever device they're using this on. Um, it works on you know, tablets, phones, etc. as long as the browser is up to date. Um, so going through uh, and just showing you what's available in here, I'm just going to explore each of the apps really quickly. Um, the reason I'm, I'm giving this as much time as I am is because it'll be a reference that you can come back to 
on the, the easy money game if you choose to use it. Uh, but I won't be doing a big in-depth tutorial on it because we actually have a video on that already done on our YouTube channel that I'll show you once I'm done here. So in terms of the game itself, um, there's a lot of these different apps in there that track and uh, allow students to make decisions. Once they've made all their decisions for the week, they hit finish the week. And that pushes them through to the next week. The game goes and takes all their decisions and generates what comes next for them. And it does that for that fully simulated 26 weeks. The game normally takes students on average between two to three hours to play. I can only give you averages because some students fly through it much quicker than that. Some take longer. Um, having used it in class myself, you will find that you know, some of your students who are slower readers um, or more deliberate thinkers, they'll take a little bit longer. Your risk takers or those who don't want to actually ponder over the information will probably fly through their first game, but they will tend to take a little bit more time on the second game, especially when some of their classmates overtake them on the, the class leaderboard that you have as a teacher, which again, I'll show you after I've shown you the student side of things. So in the email section, there's email messages that come in, including some of these items that may or may not be scams. Um, spoiler alert, that one's a scam. These things come through and the students have to look at it, investigate it, and make a decision on the that, that email offer or text message or whatever they've received. Their bills get lined up in here and they can do things like um, pay those bills, not pay those bills. Debt collectors come after them uh, for those bills if they haven't been paid. Uh, debt collection agencies will, will start contacting them. They can go bankrupt if they make really, really bad financial decisions. Uh, like for instance, I have seen students live on the maximum credit, never pay it back, uh, and then keep on spending. And they dig themselves into a hole really, really fast. The good bit about that is that when they make those sorts of decisions, they don't tend to repeat them the next time they play. That if a student goes bankrupt, and I have had it happen, they have then gone back to land some of the highest scores and financial values um, that I've seen in my classroom. The, the power of that learning experience is incredible. They can do things with their bills, um, and I've left this one alone deliberately for this session, where they can pay the bill and they can also choose whether they make it an automated payment or not. And in terms of the practice we want and the habits we want students to be able to, to start to form and see the benefit for, if they make it a regular automated repayment, They'll never get a late fee, they'll never get a late payment, they'll never get a missed payment, they'll never miss that bill for any of them that offer it, because now it's automated. Every whatever period comes out of their account, the bill is a set and forget. And that is a an item that um, I found that I would regularly be talking about, generally organically in the class, which is one of the best items, um, best experiences that Easy Money offers. The the power of the game, and it can be used in multiple different contexts, and you'll come up with your own, especially if you spend a bit of time playing it yourself, is that it encourages students to experiment. It encourages students to take these risks It encourage, in terms of the decisions they make because they can do it all over again. They can learn from those mistakes. And unlike the real world, they if they get scammed out of money, they haven't lost real money, but they have experienced it and they have learned from it. Um, so I've, I've had things like, uh, literally had students who didn't have bank accounts come to realizations that in easy money, they've learned that in, and asked questions and read about it and, and, and looked at the information that's here and realized that, uh, come to a realization that this, this compound interest thing they learned about in maths, but never really understood meant that when they have a bank account that is earning compound interest in a high interest savings account, they keep on making money just by keeping their money in that account or adding more. And that realization has led to a bunch of students that I've taught over the years, either opening bank accounts if they didn't have them or going and adding high interest savings accounts to their existing bank accounts um, and actually utilizing those. And I know that interest rates aren't always high, um, but in terms of what the students can learn from this and and the, the life skill that they can learn about how to manage their money in their accounts and, and looking at financial products and looking to see which ones have benefits and then which have drawbacks and how to manage those is incredibly powerful. 
Um, so I would encourage you to, to stay open to those organic conversational learning experiences that will, that will I promise you, arise in your, in your classroom. Uh, but also, as you play the game, and, and I know you'll do this because I'm, I'm talking to teachers, uh, but make some notes and, and give some thought to uh, your classes and who you're going to be using this with. And what are some of the things that you might like to point out and pull up and have those conversations with your classes uh, and using the game as the context for that to kind of snowball into uh, where you want to take them or maybe jumping out into other websites or experiences or activities um, where you want to take your students. And it, some of my favorite ones were segueing, uh, looking at credit cards, especially when the account, the balance wasn't paid back in full every month and going and segueing that into looking at, you know, calculators that let students not just look at um, credit cards, but buy now, pay later and deferred payment systems like Afterpay um, and those sorts of services where they can do calculations and and get their head around that, you know, that despite the fact that things like Afterpay Market being not credit, um, they do still have some quite insidious fees and charges and can snowball quite quickly if those services are utilized or not monitored um, properly and not handled uh, responsibly. They, they can really lead to, to quite significant problems. And it, it leads to some fantastic conversations and often, um, you know, stories that, you may not have been expecting about different family members or friends that, that have had the experiences with these forms of credit. Um, I live in a, a really so, low socioeconomic area and have taught in such for, like I said, nearly two decades. And these were really common stories that would come up um, and students would be laser focused on understanding and avoiding um, those sorts of pitfalls, uh, incredibly powerful and engaging experiences. Uh, then, so that was the bank accounts, um, text messages will come through good and bad. There's communications and things through there for the students to manage. There's a little weekly planner that includes a diary. Um, I'm pointing out the diary because I used to use this a lot in the classroom. I used to find these reflective questions really beneficial and students can either print them or you can access them as a teacher. And I used to actually do assessment activities around them um, with, with the way that they're written and the language that's used in them. Um, oops, that's not what I meant to do. So I'd encourage you to check those out. Uh, there is a simple budgeting tool that automatically allocates fixed expenses and then gives students, you know, a slider to have a look at what they can do with their unallocated funds. I will say uh, one of the things we have noted down that we, we would love to improve if we receive the funding to do it is to actually make this permanent so that that budget can persist. Because unfortunately, it's really just a... a a guidance tool for students to be able to look at where they may be able to put the funds and then make decisions. Every week it resets back all of the numbers update, but it doesn't persist on what their plan was, like what they could do with a more um, rigorous budgeting tool that, that remembers um, what they're planning on doing and lets them update it. Uh, so I would love to add that in, but just please keep in mind that in terms of the budgeting tool, it is just a really simple guide that helps students look at, for instance, if they just go, I want to go and put, you know, X amount into my savings. What does that leave me with to potentially, you know, invest in shares or whatever their decision making might be or putting into a term deposit. Um, they have cash that they'll receive throughout the game that'll go in their piggy bank. They can either leave it there or they can transfer it into their bank account, um, which they will possibly learn or you might guide them in the class to look at how much interest they could have earned if they end up with, you know, two grand sitting in cash. What could that have done for them if they did something other than leaving it in cash, which again, a really powerful experience for the students. Um, and I'm going to move through the rest of these elements um, a little bit more quickly because we've kind of covered the principles of, of, of easy money in terms of using it as an end of year activity is extremely engaging. It definitely keeps students going through more than one lesson. Um, and you can either use it as a standalone thing, a hook, an intro, a consolidation, or if your school does things like activities or activity weeks where you're running one, two or three or more sessions, um, this is a fantastic tool that is rigorous, it's fun, the kids love it, and it's mapped to the Australian curriculum if you need to produce that kind of um, justification for it. And, you know, it, it's used by thousands of educators and students all over Australia. And if you need anything more from me, please let me know if your school needs any further justification or, or info. Um, anything the students buy gets stored in their My Stuff. And there is a lot of both good 
and junk that your students can buy and it changes all the time on their their online shopping and online auction um, activities they that they, they will decide what they're going to do with that um, whether they buy or sell or both and showing you those first they also have this job finder which is their career progression and their their work and jobs that they undertake um, it changes every week uh, same similar jobs kind of crop up regularly uh, to give students the opportunity of kind of charting out a career pathway and career progression. So early on in the game, they'll, there's quite a few high, high earning jobs that come up and a lot of students will just leap on those and go for them because it's a high earning position and they don't look at what the prerequisites are. So I'm in week five. I currently have this job called a regional member consultant. Um, I've only got one job. If I get more than one job, it comes up with a little button that indicates that. But in the, if I was to go, oh, I want to change over. This one earns more money per fortnight. I want to jump into it. They've got to meet the prerequisites and they've got to meet the experience. And I can tell you here that if I applied for that job, I wouldn't get it at the moment because I have no experience in this particular playthrough as a social media administrator. Um, I had the experience to let me get this regional membership consultant job. So there's a lot of options through here from entry level all the way through to really top end high earning positions that students can explore and they can look at um, you know whether they want to try and chart out a pathway that gives you know, whether they want to work weekends or some students make decisions that no just like in real life i want to keep some time to myself i don't want to be working seven days a week there's really interesting conversations that come out of that and decision making that students um and criteria that students uh develop to make those decisions it's and it changes for every single class um, there's a really basic little shares tool in here it is not connected to anything external excuse me it is only a basic little indicator to to give them a look at some you know categories of shares and and to see what can happen with buying and selling shares and things like um costs of trades uh just to give them a, a taste of that experience it is not a rigorous share trading tool so please do be aware of that there and you'll know you'll notice it when you go and play the game and, and test it out yourself and then finally there's this little finance weekly where every week there's an article that covers um, some in-game knowledge and it also covers external things um, to help educate students and, and contextualize what they're doing with their gameplay. The students that read those articles tend to do a lot better in your class because they can take what they've learned at the very least and apply it to the game. And if they read the article, they also tend to do really well on the weekly quiz that earns them extra cash. Now, while we're sitting here, I need to go back one step. When you go to register your class, you have a choice between two versions of the game. There's Easy Money, which is just the standard version we started with. And then there's Easy Money Plus that we developed um, based on feedback and demand from teachers wanting a differentiation tool. So there's a summary there that you can read through um, in choosing which one you want to do. The one I've been showing you is Easy Money Plus. For easy money, there's no shares. The rest of the game looks the same, but it actually has more rigorous problem solving, um, a few more insidious, harder to detect scams and problems that come up. Um, there's more financial decisions and situations that the students face that the, the game pops up and throws out to them that just makes it a little bit more challenging for them. Uh, so my suggestion is to try them both out yourself. Um, if in doubt, Start your class with Easy Money and then move them on to Easy Money Plus if you think they're ready for it. Um, if you've got a really high achieving group or um, maybe some senior students that you want to get straight into the, the harder, in inverted commas, um, version of Easy, Mo Easy Money, then please, by, by all means, do. But like any resource, please suss it out yourself and make those decisions. Now, I've spent a fair bit of time on easy money because it is that gamified resource that it tends not to be utilized as much in schools this style of resource because there's not many places that develop it and especially not many that make it available for free so this isn't by any stretch something like cool maths where you have those little um kind of short brief games that don't have a lot of intellectual rigor or or educational rigor sitting behind them this entire game was built from the ground up mapped and scaffolded off the australian curriculum so 
we take it took it really seriously this approach to making a gamified resource that taught young people um, these important financial capability lessons, even if a teacher didn't get involved. And then if a teacher got involved in the mix as well, it just escalates their outcomes even further, which is exactly what we're after. So the students, when they're done, like I said, they finish the week and the game goes and processes all their decisions. They can hit save at any point. They've got these frequently asked questions and help that they can go back to that I highly recommend you direct them to but they are broken down in more detail in the teacher video for Easy Money on our YouTube channel. Um, for now, getting back to you know, what we're in is this um, context of using it for an end of year of activity. The leaderboard that you have, this is the button that is the teacher dashboard. And it gives you your class leaderboard that you can pop up and show to students. It's not live, it only refreshes every hour or so. So please just be aware of that when you're showing it that if a student finishes a week and they want to see if they beat their friend on the leaderboard, it doesn't work like that. It, they will need to wait for it to refresh and, and see how they're sitting next lesson um, or at the end of the lesson. But you can see all the students in your class. You can see how they're tracking with their total score. You can Please don't give this link to your students because you can also go in and see all the decisions that they made. Um, you can see their diary responses and you can even drill down into like overall data on your class because this whole dashboard is is about giving the teacher data that they can use or mean or you can just use the leaderboard and, and completely ignore it there's a whole spectrum of using this data that you can investigate and see what works or doesn't work best for you and, and your context um, in the in the context of like end of year activities the most common use for it is the leaderboard because in that end of year situation, most teachers aren't looking for a, a tool that they can then use for assessment, but you might be, or you might look at this and go, this is great for the end of the year. And I also want to integrate it into XYZ in 2024 and beyond. Oops. So that's all of the tools that sit in the, um, in easy money as a, the gamified resource. The ones that teachers tend to be a lot more familiar with is our Operation Financial Literacy, or what sits under printable resources, is a massive PDF, or it can also be broken into 12 smaller PDFs, that has all of these topics in it, and it's done in a Blackline Masters style resource. So it's just a straight PDF download that you can then pick apart and choose from whatever activities you want to grab out to use with your students. So if I did like the, the full big one download, this is nearly 700 pages of activities when you put all 12 of the modules together and you can search through it with keywords, you can scroll down through it, you can jump between the modules um, or you can go and go, okay, I don't actually want the entire thing, but I do want to grab the budgeting module. So you can download that module or just parts of it. We've tried to make it as user friendly as possible for how a teacher might want to use it. Um, for me, I used to always just use the full big, big version. Some of you who've been around a while may even have a, a copy of the old folder we used to post out when this was a, a printed only resource before it went online. So in those modules, they all have the same format. They all start with, they're all broken into topics. The topics all have keywords and language that are put into them. Um, the topics all have the mapping for each of those topics. The topics have teacher notes and student worksheets and where they're available, their solutions. Now, when we say teacher notes, we don't actually put lesson plans together. We put the resource together and we do some suggestions on how you may like to use that resource and suggestions on how the resource could be used. We don't go, you know, here's your five minute hook or whatever your state, territory or region calls the, the lesson structure that you use. Um, you know, we don't have hook or warm up or whatever it is that you have in, in your structures. We are basically looking to put together the activities put them in the hand of the professionals who know their students, know their class, know their curriculum to use or ignore for the ones that you skip over as you see fit to meet your needs. So there's the teacher notes and then there's the student worksheets. Um, for me, I used to actually do this in OneNote. So I would actually take snips or copy and paste from the PDF into the OneNote and I'd do it that way. Um, that was how I did it with my students when I was using OFL. Uh, please take it do with it as you will, or if it's not the sort of resource that works for you, pay more attention to the, the next ones that are coming up. So also in your Educator Hub, we have these WebQuest, uh, we call them WebQuest Impact Lessons. 
But web quests are a, a style of activity that have actually been around since the, the late 90s, the very early days of the internet. There was a US university that put these together as a, a research-based structure that lets students either do self-guided learning or be integrated and guided with their students and their classmates. So the web quests actually have a research-based structure that sits behind them. Um, we have one web quest at least for each of the modules in that printable resource you saw, the OFL. So we've actually distilled them down into, if students only do this topic once, what are the key takeaways that can be done in 60, 60 minutes to two hours? Um, and how do we set this up so that the teacher can either guide it or say you're away or a relief teacher's taking over or whatever your situation might be that you could give it to the, the link to the young people they could complete the activity and email it back to you. It's got a, a very broad um, usage and very broad spectrum of how it can be used. Uh, I, I've left this page loaded because this is what um, the color schemes will look like on the free platform we use called Zoonal. Um, my, my computer decided to have a, a little hissy fit as I was getting this webinar set up. So I do apologize that the, the web quests themselves are grayed out a little bit. That's 100% my computer, but I did not have time to restart before the, the webinar was starting. So my apologies for this, that it's really washed out on the screen. It doesn't normally look like this. It normally looks like that kind of color scheme. But the, the web quest is broken down into each of these sections. When you provide the link to the students, they work through the sections. You as a teacher even have an information page. Um, it's very straightforward. It's not text dense. It's a, a really succinct to the point series of activities and tasks that guide students towards the learning outcome that we're after in that activity. Uh, what we've also done with the web quest is if, the, if there's the ability to put together a worksheet where students could actually type directly into the PDF instead of having, you know, 28 students in your class give you 28 versions of their research they completed for the web quest or the activities they've completed for the web quest, we've taken the time to do that um, and make it available. Students download it, save it, and email it back to you. And in those instances, like for this income and employment one, where there's a solution to that, we've also put that, if you log in as a teacher, you can download the solution and compare it if you are wanting to mark or look over your student responses as well. So the same worksheet they get, if it only has one response or one solution, we put that together. I will say that for this task, there's actually some sections down here um, that we don't have on the solution where the student has to do some higher order thinking and every student could potentially come up with a different answer. But those are all there. Again, they're in that educator hub. The link to the web quest is there. The OFL, that um, Blackline master style resource that it's distilled from is linked to as well. And if there's a solution, that's downloadable also. So again, if, you, if the gamified resources isn't quite what you're looking for in your end of year planning, or you're looking forward to 2024 in terms of how you might use this, have a look at the web quest if you're looking for something that kind of distills down a topic rather than builds it out like the Blackline Masters Operation Financial Literacy does. The web quest distill it down into, if we only get one crack at this in a limited time frame. Here's some really core cool concepts that the, the, the young people can work through with you or on their own um, and take, get some key takeaways from. So that's the, the web quest. And again, I am apologetic that it is so grayed out. Um, where there's a connection to easy money, that's mentioned in there as well. So we, we do like to make note of the fact that you can consolidate or expand on that learning with easy money. I used to actually use easy money and then do versions of these web quests before I was working with FBF with my students to get them to explore the topics further. That I found worked really well for me in the classroom context. In the end of year context, I mainly focused on easy money because it was such a great resource that didn't require any connection to anything else and the kids loved it. Um, and then in the teacher page, there's the mapping and how you get into easy money and various other different links and bits and pieces to us. Before, I'm still going good here. We're just about to hit the 45 minute mark where I want to go to the questions. Frequently asked questions are the ones in chat. So if you do have questions that haven't been answered yet, please do put them in that chat window. I have it open and I'm about to refer to that um, when, I, when I go back to the, the PowerPoint to do the frequently asked questions. So 
The other thing that I wanted to make, or that I made mention of, that I wanted to show you really quickly, is our YouTube page is at Financial Basics, or youtube.com forward slash at Financial Basics. And on here is the teacher guide and the player guides for Easy Money that I mentioned. And these are updated, every time we do an update to Easy Money, we update these guides. So it's reflective of our new website. For those of you who may be existing FBF members, the, the videos are reflective of exactly what it looks like as you navigate your way around through the, the new website. The teacher guide goes through in a lot more detail how to use um, Easy Money in the classroom, things like step-by-step -step registering classes and troubleshooting student passwords, those sorts of things are, are covered in more detail and you can skip between the chapters. And then the Easy Money Player Guide is actually incredibly um, popular with teachers as well. Takes teachers and players, or teacher players as well, through the game, answers a lot of their frequently asked questions, and I'd highly recommend that as a resource that if you can give that direct to students if your school allows it, um, please do, uh, because they, they jump ahead and they can start answering their own questions and not have you know 20 hands going up in the room to ask you the same thing 20 times. Um, and also on here, the sneak peek you're about to get into our new resource, uh, the Money IQ series, it will be going live on here on the 16th of November. So for those of you who are, who are watching the session live, you're about to see that whole video. Again, YouTube, you're about to see a 15 second sneak peek. If you subscribe, you'll get that notification when it goes live. So back to the PowerPoint. Um, oh, I already did the YouTube channel. So there you go. There's that link to the YouTube channel again. Um, wrapping up and then getting into the sneak peek. So those are all the things that we do. They're all the things that we've covered in this session. The other thing I'd note to you is if you are looking at this and would like a session done with you or your school or your department, let me know. I do those all the time. Um, I'm well and truly set up to do them remotely. There, there's a limited opportunity to do them locally if I have if I'm nearby or I'm traveling through a region. Um, but the the remote version is the one that is the easiest to do, and it's just a matter of scheduling it. And again, like all of our resources, there's no cost to that. Now this, I'm just going to let this play and be quiet. This is our latest resource. You're the the first people who are getting to look at it um, this year. This is the Money IQ series. The first um, five videos in this series are around the topic of banking, and it's a video series we've done up to cover this in an Australian context around financial literacy, things that are relevant to teenagers that can be viewed directly by teens or used by teachers. And we've used some animated elements to, to do it. I'm Monique, but my friends call me Mon. I'm here to share a bit of wisdom about the world of money and banking with you. Super fun, right? Now, finances can get a bad rap, can seem kind of complicated and daunting, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you get your head around a few core concepts. And that's what I'm here to help with. But I couldn't possibly know everything without my little friend IQ here, who has all the answers to all my questions all the time. Always happy to help. So in terms of getting access to the resources, if you go to our website, uh, up the top, there's a thing that says sign up, or you can just go slash join. Um, you can download all of the resources that are printable and pick through those. You can register as many Easy Money class links of whatever kind as you like. Um, you can use the web quests and download the solutions for those if you would like those as well. Um, and the, the next little section that I'm going to go through is the, the frequently asked questions. So while I go through these frequently asked questions, um, I'm going to pop up a, a little poll. It's a very quick anonymous poll, and it's the stuff I have to report back to my board of directors on after each session. So you're um, ticking those boxes and filling those things out. Those questions out would be greatly appreciated. And hopefully it's, it's only it's five quick questions. Hopefully it... Um, doesn't take too long to do if you're willing to do so. And I'll close it off at the end of, of going through the frequently asked questions. So we've been through the resources are free for Australian educators. Again, if you're just coming in or you've skipped ahead in the recording, all our resources are free for Australian educators. Um, all you need to do to access those resources is register a teacher account and log in. Uh, your students who play Easy Money actually come under you as the teacher and create a student account. So. Even if I'm helping you troubleshoot, all I can see of your students is their email address, If in, just in case I have to reset their password. Um, 
if you forget your password, there's a reset password button for teachers. Again, contact me if that doesn't work because it means that your school or department internet filters are stopping it from arriving. I can reset your password for you and get you up and running. Um, if you're not getting those emails, please, 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 please ask your IT staff to put our web domain into the safe list because that'll save you the headaches with your students as well as you know, let you reset your own password if you need to. If you want a more detailed breakdown of those steps of how you register to play Easy Money um, and get your students up and running with it, please do make sure you check out those guides on our YouTube channel. They're step by step going through exactly those things. Um, the Easy Money game generally takes two to three hours to play. Web quests generally take one to two hours for students to complete. Um, in terms of Easy Money, there's five games per link that you create for your students and you can make as many as you want of those links. Um, students don't have to do it all at once. They can save and exit whenever they like. And I don't know why that says two weeks. That's a typo on my part. Students have as long as they want to do that and they can save their progress. Um, apologies for my typo. Can you as a teacher play Easy Money? Yes, yes you can. We, in fact, not just can you, we highly encourage it. Um, if you make register a class by mistake, sorry, you can't delete that class. Um, that they all get cleared out at the end of year during our maintenance period, but there's no ability for us to remove those classes once they're registered. If you happen to register the wrong class name, just either ignore it or roll with it in whatever way it works for you. Um, up to 50 students can join each of the classes you register. Uh, there's no limit to how many classes you can register. Your students don't have to finish, even if you would probably prefer that they did. Um, and the recording for this session will be up on our YouTube channel. My aim is to have it up by close of business tomorrow. So the live is, is Tuesday, the 2nd of November, aiming to have the recording up. And if you're watching the recording, then that means I've been successful on um, Friday, the 3rd of November by close of business. And again, uh, highly, 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 highly recommend hit subscribe on that Financial Basics YouTube channel um, and you'll actually get those Money IQ video notifications when they go live and you'll be able to actually watch them and check them out um, and see how they may fit in what you're doing with your teaching and learning. Again, there's our website for where to find out more. There's my contact details. And I only have one more thing to pop up here. So if there's any questions um, that haven't been answered, please start putting them into the chat. So that's that's me, that's directly to me and then also our, our socials. So please do come swing by our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I nearly said Twitter, our X. Uh, and, and check out what we're putting out through those channels as well and, in, and feel free to engage with us through them also. Uh, the final thing I have, and this is while I go to the questions that may be coming in on the chat, if you have previously used um, FBF resources, if you could spare me about two minutes of your time to scan that QR code or type in that link and do our 2023 member survey, it would be hugely appreciated because we're going to be looking over that member survey and looking at the and and helping use it to inform our works for 2024 2025 as part of our forward planning and strategic planning so if you are able to give us a bit of feedback if you if and only if you have used our resources before please don't spend your time on it if you haven't because the questions will make no sense um if you if you haven't used you know any of our any at all of our resources. If you have, regardless of which one, it doesn't have to be all of them, but if you've used any of them, please do um, please do take that survey. It would be really, really appreciated and extremely helpful for us. Because as a small charity, we don't have or do like a big advertising budget um, or any advertising budget. Uh, so the way that we get this information is engaging directly with our members and would love for you to please spread the word about the fact that we exist because that's how... Um, most teachers find out about us. But finally, um, before I get to the thank you and then just wait to see if there's any more questions before we potentially wrap up, a big thanks to our, our current two sponsors in Suncorp Bank and BDO. Um, it's their funding that, that makes things like this possible and, and all the resources that we've developed and, and also new ones like Money IQ that are about to come out. Um, working with partners like those is what lets us put them together. And finally from me, Thank you for everything you've no doubt been through at the coalface of education this year. 
very much appreciate you making the time to either watch this recording or sit through the the session um, live and appreciate uh, everything you do for our young people in schools because it is a forgiving and difficult job. Um, I know that firsthand and I admire and appreciate all of the work that you're doing and the fact that you're taking an interest in um, the skills and tools to assist young people with their financial literacy and financial capability. Uh, for some of them, it may be the only place that they receive it is from you. So thank you very much. And if you've got any final questions, um, I'll just leave it another minute to see if there's any more to come through. Otherwise, thank you very much, everyone. And I very much appreciate you being here. And if you're watching the recording, thank you very much for taking the time out um, to engage with the resources. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me if there's anything at all I can help you with.